I'd like to share with you a quote. And this is from an old uh, captain of a boat. Steel schooner named Wolf out of uh, Key West, Florida, I believe. And he had kind of a feature thing on this guy's channel. The video was called The Old Man in the Sea, Return to Cuba. <clears throat> and his name is Captain Finbar Gittleman. And I think this quote is apt to this boat. In any boat, really. It goes like this. Most people think of a ship as an inanimate thing. It's not. The ship has a spirit. It is the spirit of the people who built her, the spirit of the people who sailed on her. A ship acquires a spirit over the years and becomes a spiritual being, just like a person is. And I certainly feel that that's the case with this boat. This is a boat that's been a lot of places, seen a lot of things, built by a guy in his boatyard. 60 some years ago and I can't say that when I'm working on this I don't feel echoes of the past reverberating through the bones of this boat these things do take on a life of their own even if they're just wood and fiberglass or steel or whatever they're made out of and this boat here which is almost a living thing it was built by living Built by living people, out of living things, out of the trees, out of metal mined from the earth and refined by people. There's nothing with as much character or as much soul for an object as a boat like this. So yeah. It's my little waxing philosophical for you. Here we are. Here's where the companionway steps go. That panel goes over the front. The steps are right there. And this is the first time I've showed you guys the aft um, cabin area. So, so we have some cool stuff here. Here, 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 those stainless screws that they refastened the planks with in the 80s came up sideways up alongside the frames. That's just beautiful. There's our mizzen step. <clears throat> All right, so on the last video, one guy was like, you should really try to start the engine. This is why I don't want to try to start the engine. See that? That's the beginning of our exhaust pipe and I can literally stick my finger up underneath there. This whole piece that was on the side just shaled off one day when I was looking at it. So with these kind of condition issues, I don't want to try to start this motor until I uh, get some assurances that weird things aren't going to happen. Uh, so I want to look underneath the uh, where the mask was and see if we have any coinage. Yeah, sorry, it's not really any good place to clamp this camera. Kind of freehanding it. Let's move this. Nope, no coinage. Um, the object of my being in here today was to kind of trace these fuel lines and whatnot. So have the feed, feed and return. So feed is, that's the one that goes to the motor. This is the other feed line, so it's, this. 
All right, so we're feeding diesel from the top of the tank, which there's probably something inside there that siphons it downward. These must be the throttle cables. So these. That's probably the throttle control down there. Now that I know it feeds from the top, in here it's a mess yeah so that's, that's, that's the feed with the stripe on there it goes over to the valve up there I have this hose which comes up and around here and then it goes from a small hose to a larger hose and that comes down here and goes to the return which comes over there and goes on to the side of the engine. Look at that. The uh, line is all destroyed. Glad I trust my instincts to not try to start this thing. She's going to need an overhaul. But I can't say I didn't expect this. So there was another guy in the comments saying that I should definitely get rid of this old diesel tank. I think this is fairly new. This was probably put in in 2001 when they re-stepped the masts and put this newer Volvo diesel in. So I think this is fine, but what I brought up is that it's just kind of like this big rectangular box. I mean, it's not terribly positioned, but I'm thinking, why not just have a couple custom made tanks that just kind of sit up here alongside the hull that are contoured with the hull and then kind of square off. I think that would be a bit more efficient use of space. And then, so behind the galley, there can be storage for, you know, galley related things instead of just a big fuel box. And I could just sequester the fuel tanks back up in here. Then of course that begs the question, where am I gonna put a propane locker? But these are all things to think about. There's the exhaust, comes down here, goes into, it's probably a muffler. Comes up, loops up and around and goes, looks like a twin exhaust. Tees off. Uh, these are the scupper drains for the cockpit. One port, one starboard. So yeah, it'll be good to get this motor out, then I can assess all the structure underneath. Because I don't want to leave anything, any stone unturned in this boat. She needs work. But she's not too shot. She's not too far gone. Look at that. Look. Uh, stalactites coming out of that rust. Ooh. That's nice, man. That's nice. Yeah. There's our aft cabin. All right, so we'll get this hose off first. Your little bucket here. Let's just bucket out of the way so we can get this hose clamp off of here. So what I'm planning on doing is detaching this line from this feed valve and then running it back into the aft cabin where I can get it at its lowest point and drain whatever might be in that line. Alright. 
So these uh, hose brackets. Yeah, the screw heads are already stripped out. All right, so we're gonna take a chisel. Today on creative uses for chisels. Okay, so I guess uh, we'll do the return now. All right, that line's drained. Let's see. There we go. So I guess the good thing is these valves still work pretty damn well, so I'll save those. back down there let's get this hose clamp off because I know there shouldn't be any fuel up in this part it's in the fridge yeah okay yeah downstairs is a good place to do it that's where I did the intro for the last episode I can see you through the hole in the hull. Do you see me? Not really. <laughs> well, all good. Yeah, the wife has her own YouTube channel. If anybody's interested. She's kind of... Nothing having really to do with what we do here. She's more of like art and drawing and painting, all that kind of stuff. Um, but if you guys are interested, I could link to that. She's pretty talented. She's good, good at drawing. Hell of a lot better than I am. That's damn sure. Definitely still have fuel in that line. What a Mickey Mustache setup that is, huh? Oh wow, Coast Guard plane flying low. So I'm going to try to get the battery switch off because that seems to be in pretty good condition and I think we'll be able to reuse it. Get this sticky bucket of diesel out of here. So this is a Perco. It seems to be in pretty good condition. Save that.
Looks like the oil's pretty clean in there. See, I don't know if I want to <clears throat> rip this thing out quite yet because it's structural to the steps. That's all mahogany. Look at that. They painted over all this nice mahogany. This coolant tank is got a strap bracket and that's on a steel mount attached to that companionway frame piece so I'm what I'm think I'm gonna do is to start try to break that strap bracket off and cut these bolts so I can get this piece off without breaking this because I could probably just like wrench this thing over and off but that would destroy this piece and that's a piece of mahogany and I'm as you know by now I'm not really into destroying pieces of mahogany but I mean, this does look fairly rotten, especially up here. So, but I'll make the determination if I'm gonna keep that after I take it off. There's a bolt down on the other side here. Let's see if I can get the nut off. shot of coral to help along. Success, there's that nut. Well, there's not even anything in that. Fucking antifreeze. That's nice. Got a bunch of antifreeze down in the bilge. got down there. Lovely. So 
So those were screws. Nice. I'm just gonna start cutting these wires. This is a jumbled mess. Standard base light socket in a boat. I think that might be asbestos wrapped wire too. That's just great. <clears throat> hey, hey, more bungs and screws. All right, I don't feel like dealing with all these bungs and screws right now, so I'm not gonna do that. Maybe I'll get that depth sander out. Ooh. For the record, I wasn't actually hitting this. I was hitting the board that it's mounted to. Tell you this few days of nice weather is getting me uh getting me real in the mood for that boat shed. But I went to H and R Block over the weekend and uh, filed my taxes, so that couple thousand dollars worth of lumber should be forthcoming. More more access to the old motor. Oh, it's made in Sweden, yeah. It is a hole. Ah! I have found the data plate. All right, guys. For any of you wondering what we have for a, an engine, Maverick. I'll take you down here. <sighs> 
Series 2003, we've got a serial number. Beautiful. I thought that was the data plate. I was like, ah, no! But we, had, we found the actual data plate, so that's good. All right, guys, that's it for one day. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, so this is Matt, this is Maverick. We've got a few days of clear weather coming up. So I'm gonna leave the boat uncovered. So you can dry out and air out and all that good stuff. And it's a beautiful sunset. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. See you next week.